Hello well, guys, this is Corey with TechEd LLC at TechEdLearning.com. What you're looking at is the software that comes with the LEGO Mindstorms. This is the Teacher Edition, uh, very similar to the Students Edition as well as the Home Edition. Uh, there are some few subtle differences. Uh, what we want to look at today is just the basic overview of the program and how it works. Uh, the first thing we'll start off is, is the program setter up here. You want to save your projects and the project names that are up here. So when you're saving your project, you can just come up here to the save button. This would be the first thing when you do when you open it is save your project. So you save project, there will be a menu that pops up, save as. So call it something that is relevant to the project you're doing and make sure that you can pick it out of a crowd, if you will, uh, so you know what the name is. There are some rules uh, when you go to type in your name, and if you have any errors, it'll come up and tell you what you did wrong or what you can't use inside the name. This is the name that will display on the brick when you download the program. So make sure you, again, carefully select your name so you can pick it out easily and play that program. Uh, let's start off with uh, over here. We have um, your arrow that's here and your select arrow. You need to have this selected to really do anything on the main screen here. I say this because you will have to use the pan tool every now and then. When your program gets long, you may pan the entire screen over. And if you go to try to select something down here when you're on pan, it doesn't work. So if you click on select, you can come down and then select things and move them around. So if you see the hand and you can't move anything, that's why you need to click on the arrow here. You have comment boxes, and comment boxes are nice because you can bring them in and they do appear small at first, but they're like a text box. And you can kind of give yourself some notes on what it is you're doing in your program. At first, during our activities, we won't be using comment blocks, but as the programs get longer and longer, you're going to want to start using program or these um, comments because it'll help you um, prevent some confusion so you know what's going on in your program. Here's the save button again. You have an undo button, redo button, zoom out, which is helpful when your program starts to get big. Um, you can zoom out so you can see the whole thing or zoom in to look at a particular part of it. And a quick reset to get back to this uh, ratio here is just click on the one to one. Let's head down to the bottom. These are our action blocks and you use any of these no matter what file you're in. If you want to uh, say move the move the tank here you just pull that up and connect it to the start block and now this is going to start the program and it's going to look at the uh, move tank block and it's looking for a number of rotations uh, so this is kind of a category that you might want to set first so like for this particular one you can just say oh I want to turn off everything I can do that turn it on indefinitely for run it for a number of seconds on degrees and for a certain number of rotations. These two are the speeds at which those motors are running. We typically only run at 50% power. Uh, very rarely do we go above that. There's no need to go above it, only under certain conditions. Uh, this would again be a rotation. So this would run your uh, bot for one rotation, both motors for one rotation, moving it forward and then it moves on to the next one. Now you do connect these together uh, no matter which one you're bringing up you connect it together but sometimes you may have different programs down here where it runs and you can connect two together like so and say I, I had another option going on here I can put a brick down here and run this like so. So that's how you can connect some things together. They don't always necessarily have to come back up and connect into the program. Now you're just running two things at the same time, and that's fine. Um, all right, so back down here. So these are again as our actions tab. Notice that they're green, and notice that these are green at the top. Inside these are telling you the ports of which you're running. So my um, robot's looking at motors on B and C right now. So these are B and C. Um, so here we have the, the medium motor, and I'll just uh, show you that. The medium motor is connected to port A. So I can run something on port A. Uh, we have the large motors, again, which are these. 
and you have steering. Uh, steering we don't use a whole lot. If you wanted to do like an, uh, an arc turn, you would use these because uh, you can steer your motor a little bit easier with these, but we don't use them that often. Most of the time we use the move tank, which is looking at both the motors. Um, over here is your display. So again, these are actions. So this is something that would be coming out. So uh, it would be the, the digital part of the screen if it would. And you also have sound outputs. Uh, so if you want the, the brick to make a sound during when something happens, you'd use this. And then here's your status light. So it'll tell you different, it'll give you different lights depending on what you want it to do. Move over to the flow control. Again, you have your start, which automatically shows up when you start the program. Weight blocks uh, are used all the time. You'll be using this quite often. So if there's your weight block, a loop is when you want something to happen over and over again. And this is a great option for you. A switch is when you have, uh, you want maybe if or then or different circumstances, you use switches. So these are very useful tools as well. Uh, loop interrupts, you don't use a whole lot, but th that's where they are. So moving over to here, these are our sensors. Now your kit does not come with all the sensors. We would consider the brick buttons to be a sensor. Is if you press this button, then that would happen or whatever. You have color sensors, gyro, uh, infrared. Now be careful when you choose this because infrared is different than ultrasonic. They are not the same. They look very similar. Ultrasonic is sending out a, a high frequency pitch and is reading what's coming back at it, while infrared is looking at temperatures. Motor rotation, uh, so you can actually sense when a motor is turned. So instead of using that as an output to move something, you can use it as a tool to measure something as well. You have temperature sensors, which doesn't come in our kit. You have a timer, we uh, touch sensors, there's the ultrasonic again, energy doesn't come in our kit, and neither does the uh, sound sensor. So those are your sensors. Over here we have our data. This is more for the advanced users. Um, you need to know some logic to be able to do a lot of these things, but this is just dealing with data that you want to to plug into your program. And there's a lot of math functions in here as well. Uh, so this is where math really comes into robotics is when you're using these guys here, as well as when you're trying to program movement. Your advanced, you don't use a whole lot. One thing I would like to point out is stop program. If you want to make an interrupt, so if something's hitting, the program shuts down, you'd want to use the stop block there. My bricks are used when you, for advanced users as well, when you pr when you make a brick that's specialized, you can save that brick in this section here so you can pull it up instead of remaking that brick all the time. Let's move over to this section. This is a lot of good information over here in the corner. Right now, if we select on the top one here, this is your brick information. It's telling me that I have my battery life, which is uh, excellent right now. It's fully charged. It tells me what firmware I'm running. And it tells me that I'm connected, and that little blue bar there is how much space is inside the brick. And you can see that I have quite a bit left. Um, you do need to see this little blue bar before you download a program. Um, move down to this one. These are port views. So this is looking at my uh, brick is on and connected via USB. So I'm looking at motors here. Now this is motor A. And if I move motor A, you'll see that I'm actually getting an output here. So now it's at 30 degrees in comparison to where it was when the brick was turned on. We go over to motor B, I'm at zero. And these are my, um, you can switch what's being displayed by the way. This is my uh, wheels, so if I push my wheels forward, you'll see that those change. So that's useful as well. And again, this is my other motor. D's not hooked up. Here's a switch. And right now it's out, so it's on zero. And if I press in the button, you'll see that that changes to one. So this is a good way to figure out which ports your uh, devices are connected to. This is my uh, ultrasonic. 
measure here and I can measure this in centimeters or inches. So I just switched it to inches. So if you see 100.3, that means that it's too far out for it to see anything. But if I place something in front here, I just put my hand in front of there and you can see about how far it is away. Here's the sensor on the other side. So again, I can press, oops, I clicked on it. Sensor on the other side is right there. So if I click on the button here, you'll see that changes to a one saying that it is pushed in. And then you have the color sensor here. And that's measuring my reflectivity at the moment. So it's looking down at the tabletop and saying that there's 11% reflectivity. But if I move this up, you'll see that that value drops. Um, so if I had something white underneath there, the value would go up quite a bit. This is useful when you're programming uh, to follow a line or to look at a piece of tape. You want to know what those values are. So you, you wouldn't use that for that. This is download a program to the brick. So if I click this, it's going to <coughs> download to the, to the brick and the brick will make a sound once it get, receives that program. The download and run, same thing. It downloads it and then it immediately starts that program. Be careful with this button, especially if you're using USB or if it's sitting on a table. You don't want to hit this and have your bot run off the table. Uh, so this is download and run. This could be useful if you're using USB or wireless. Um, or sorry, wireless or Bluetooth. Uh, USB, you don't want to use this unless your robot is something that sits in one place and doesn't move. You have a run selected, so you can look at your list. Again, if I go over here to the last tab, this will tell me what um, programs I have listed inside the, uh, the block. So that's a useful thing to do so you can run what you want to select. Well, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Continue on with the activities on TechEdLearning.com. Thanks for watching.